over, which was almost a month long. And now it's time for the exit polls to predict who will win and who will lose in the five elections before, of course, the main counting day, which happens on 3rd December. Now, the exit poll uh, uh, figures are out, and uh, we'll try and put out uh, the figures uh, for you on the screen. And if I may play out the, the first state for you, the, the figure comes from Chhattisgarh. And uh, Nisha, if you could just play out uh, the first plate for the viewers so that we can make them understand as to what the, the exit poll data says. So here is a figure for Chhattisgarh. Now, uh, this is uh, Janki Bath. Uh, if you could maximize uh, Nisha, because I can't see the plate right now. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Telangana figure for you. Uh, Janki Bath gives uh, BRS 40 to 45 seats, BJP 7 to 13, uh, Congress 48 to 64. Uh, then you have P mark, which gives 37 to 51 to BRS, 2 to 6 BJP, and 58 to 71 uh, to Congress. Now, this is the Telangana figure. Uh, then let's let's go to the next state now. Rajasthan, Janki Bath gives Congress 62 to 85, BJP 100 to 122, and others 14 to 15. Then we have P mark, which gives 69 to 81 to Congress, 101 to 125 to BJP, and others 5 to 15. Then you have Poll Star, which gives 90 to 100 to Congress, 100 to 110 to BJP, and 5 to 15. This is a figure for Rajasthan. Now, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Janki Bath gives 102 to 125 seats to Congress, and 100 to 123. So, which means that the contest is very, very tight here. P Mark again gives Congress uh, 103 to 122, BJP 103 to 122, and others 3 to 8. Republic 97 to 107 to Congress, 118 to 130 to BJP, and others 2. Then TV9 uh, gives uh, 111 to 121 to Congress, 106 to 116 to BJP, and others 6. Then you have the data for Mizoram. John Kibath gives 10 to 14 to, uh, I think this is uh, MNF, then 15 to 25, then Congress gets about five to nine seats, BJP zero to two. Then uh, P Mark gives uh, MNF 14 to 20. Then we have one party which gets nine to 15, then seven to 13 to Congress. BJP doesn't open an account here, seems not to open an account. Then India TV gives 10 to 14 to MNF, 15 to 25, then Congress 5 to 9 and 0 to 2 seats to BJP. So this is uh, uh, now the figure for Chhattisgarh. Janki Bath uh, gives 42 to 53 seats to Congress, BJP 36 to 45 and others 0 to 3. Mark gives Congress 46 to 54. 35 to 42 to BJP, 0 to 2 to others. Archtak gives 40 to 50 seats to Congress, 36 to 46 to BJP, and others don't open an account. Then India TV gives about 46 to 56 seats to Congress in Chhattisgarh, and 30 to 40 uh, to BJP, and others 3 to 5. So again here, the contest is is quite close, but yes, in Chhattisgarh, uh, Congress seems to be forming the government. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the few so, uh, the exit poll figures which are out. <laughs> uh, head straight into the discussion. Uh, we have with us uh, people joining us from Chhattisgarh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and also our experts who have been on the field. Joining me is uh, T. S. Sudhir from uh, Telangana, a senior journalist. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, then we have uh, Anil Sharma from Rajasthan. We have. Uh, Rakesh Dikshit is not here. Uh, Sunil uh, Kumar is from uh, Chhattisgarh, editor from Daily Chhattisgarh. So thank you so much for joining. We have S. Srinivasan, who is our editor-in-chief at the Federal. So thank you so much for joining. We have deputy editor from the Frontline, T.K. Raj Lakshmi with us. Thank you so much. And we have uh, uh, Puneet Nicholas Yadav, who is a senior journalist with the Federal. Thank you so much, Puneet. And we have Gyan Varma, who is also a senior journalist with the Federal. Uh, Puneet had been traveling... Uh, Puneet and myself, we had traveled to Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and Gyan was in Rajasthan. But uh, let me begin uh, with Telangana first, where, of course, the voting has just got over. And let me begin with 
dear sudhir uh, what do the exit uh, poll figures uh, look like uh, to you sudhir yes uh, you're muted i think uh, sudhir you're muted yeah sorry sorry uh, Nilu, the feeling on the ground definitely is that the Congress is likely to emerge as the single largest party. So in that sense, these polls uh, go along with that mood. But I am not very inclined to believe these polls which have come even as there were still crowds at the polling booths. In fact, one senior IPS officer messaged me saying that how are these exit poll, so-called exit poll numbers coming out when the polling is not yet over. So they are opinion polls. And then, of course, they are extrapolated with the early morning kind of figures which these people pick up when the essentially the carder is voting. So I'm not very inclined to go entirely by the exit poll numbers, the so-called exit poll numbers, but they definitely give some kind of a direction, but they don't give us the exact figure as to what would the Congress or the BRS or the BJP be able to score in, the, in a state like Telangana or any other state for that matter. Uh, but yes, the mood, as we have been speaking uh, on different occasions, the mood has been one of anti-incumbency against the BRS and the BRS seems to be bearing the brunt. Anti-incumbency not so much against KCR, though that also exists to an, exist, uh, to an extent. Anti-incumbency largely against the MLAs because KCR, uh, one could say perhaps in hindsight, made the mistake of renominating over 90 of his 100 odd MLAs and many of them carried that anti-incumbency into this battle because they have been MLA for the last two terms and they were being given, they were seeking an extension for another five years. That seems to have gone against the BRS. But nevertheless, I would say that it, is, it was still a very tightly fought contest. I don't think the BRS is going to give up without a fight. Um, even if the seat, the number of seat difference could be more at the end of the day, the voting percentage is what I would closely look at. Last time, the difference was huge. They were at 47. Uh, Congress was at 29. So Congress really needs to move up quite a bit. Even if you add TDP, which fought in an alliance with Congress, it was at 32. So 32 and 47 is what we are looking at. The difference of 15% between the Congress and the BRS. And that's the long you. distance which they have to cover. Right. But Sudhir, if I may quickly interrupt you, uh, uh, the exit polls, does it... Uh... Uh, make Congress really happy and assured of the fact that at least they are touching a 60 mark, as what we've been discussing on various platforms, that uh, are there reasons for Congress to be happy then in Telangana? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Congress, in fact, uh, leaders have been messaging me saying that we are going to get a comfortable majority. It won't be, uh, we won't be kind of left in the lurch at 56, 57 kind of thing. We won't be within kissing distance of the halfway mark of 60. So right. they've seen uh, pretty confident. One person I can tell you who will be very happy for a personal reason would be Uttam Kumar Reddy, the MP in the Lok Sabha. He's also contested for the MLA seat because before 2018, he had said that I will not shave my beard till the Congress wins in Telangana. He thought they would come to power in 2018. So he has been actually growing that beard for the last five plus okay. years. So he would be able to shave if the Congress makes it on the 3rd of December. Okay, okay. Now let me come to Rajasthan because Anil has to leave for another channel. He had messaged me. So Anil, I'll come to you now. Uh, Rajasthan looks uh, very, very close. Uh, BJP getting 100 to 122, uh, like Janki Bath is saying. P Mark is giving BJP 101 to 125. Then Polestar is giving 90 to 100 uh, to Congress and 100 to 110 to BJP. Now, what, what do these figures really mean? Is Rajasthan heading somewhere uh, uh, for, for a hung assembly? Well, yes. Uh, Neeluji, you, <clears throat> you have missed on one poll, which is of uh, most probably India Today, <clears throat> where it says, you know, I'm just reading it out, where it says most probably BJP 80 to 100, Congress 100, uh, 86 to 106. Now, I consider it to be the closest of all polls. And I'm, I've been sticking my neck out, you know, and saying that Congress is might have an edge in Rajasthan. Though these polls, you know, what you're showing on the screen right now. If I may interrupt you, could you just repeat the figures again? Uh, uh, the, the, one, the one which you pointed out just now? Yes. In uh, India gives uh, 80 to 100 to BJP huh. and 86 to 106 to Congress. Okay. All now, right. my take is you take Polster and you take India Today. I consider them to be the closest of all the polls. Because I've been sticking my neck out for all these months, you know, saying that Congress will get more seats. Congress will have an edge. 
I still would say Congress seems to be having an edge. And why I'm saying so, I can give you uh, certain, you know, kind of things which goes in benefit to a benefit of Congress. One is OPS, Old Pension Scheme. The, the government employees have voted for the Congress. It, it looks like they have voted for Congress. A. B is Chiranjivi, where the rural population have voted for Congress, you know. And there is a clear urban-rural divide in Congress. In urban areas, the polarization has worked for the BJP. But in rural areas, Chiranjivi has worked for the Congress, you know. That is why I say the closest I'm finding is it's neck to neck in Rajasthan. You no, can cannot... what I'm surprised, Anil, what I'm surprised is the factor of Vasundhara Raje. That Vasundhara Raje was not on the forefront. And even then, if uh, the BJP is getting the number of seats which the exit polls are giving, uh, does it mean that this strategy of collective leadership, which BJP has been talking about, is somewhere working as well? Or, or is there some other factor uh, regarding the central welfare schemes or the schemes which uh, uh, BJP has been has uh, promised in the manifesto? Neeluji, you have to you know look at it differently. One year back, we were talking about Congress finishing at 25. Maximum 50 we touched. Now we are talking about neck to neck to uh, BJP in Rajasthan. That means Congress has improved. BJP has declined and Congress improved. So if you talk about Vasundar Raje, obviously we were looking at... Uh, BJP getting 140 seats initially. Now, where is BJP? All the polls will give you a figure of between 100 and 120. And uh, India uh, uh, today gives you about 80 to 100 seats. Yeah? My take, my personal take is that India today and pollster are the nearest to what my reading says. My reading is it's going to be edge to edge. But I've been sticking my neck out, you know, all these months and saying I'm the only journalist, I think so all over India, who has been saying that Congress has got certain age because Gyan was also there when we talked about it earlier. And I've been sticking out my, my neck out and saying Congress has got an advantage. That you, still feel, that, you still feel that Gelot will form the government in Rajasthan? I'll not say so, but I'll say Congress has got a slight edge. Hmm. So when I look at the figures of India today, it gives a 41% vote share to, uh, Congress, to BJP and 42% to Congress. Now, right. one percent gap in Rajasthan is a huge gap. In mm. 19, uh, 2018, Congress won on only on 0.5 percent of votes, and they were able to secure 26 seats more than BJP. If you are talking about one percent vote difference, obviously Congress figure which they have calculated seems lesser to me. But it seems to be edge, um, edge, edge to edge in both the cases. And I still consider it to be edge to edge with a slight, you know, um, advantage to Congress because of the Ashok Gallup schemes, because of, uh, you know, polarization not working as much as BJP wanted. It seems so on the ground. And rural urban divide. These three things. And by this, because of OPS, because of Chiranjivi health insurance scheme. This is a universal health insurance scheme of 25 lakh rupees, which is not there in any of the states, you know. So this is my take, Niluji. It's still, it's neck to neck. I don't know. Otherwise, you know, if uh, results come, it will surprise me a lot. It will surprise me a lot. But my take is a slight edge to Congress, what, uh, what uh, India Today is saying. A slight edge to Congress, right. which is I'm taking into consideration. Yep. Okay, so Congress does have an edge is what you're saying. Now, let me come to Chhattisgarh now. And uh, let's play out uh, the, the plate again for Chhattisgarh, which uh, very clearly says, the Janki Baat is giving Congress 42 to 53, BJP uh, 36 to 45. Then P Mark is giving 46 to 54 and 35 to 42. Ajtak is giving 40 to 52, Congress and 36 to 46. And India TV 46 to 56 and 30 to 40. Now, Sunil Kumar is there with us. Sunil, sir, what I want to ask you is <laughs> there was a perception that. Uh, there will be a handsome win for uh, Bhupesh Baghel. But the figures which have come out, it seems that BJP has recovered a lot of ground in Chhattisgarh. Now, was that because uh, this magic, because of the Mahadev app scam, which uh, they pointed out towards the last leg of the campaign? There are many things. And I would say uh, a slight age or a comfortable majority of plus 45 Congress. Uh, Congress should be comfortable with this because uh, 
so much of anti incumbency was here against uh, its uh, mlas and against uh, state government also congress had to change uh, 20 out of uh, 68 mlas 71 mlas 20 more than 25% mlas were changed so congress was suffering from anti incumbency at two levels at a constituency level where it had changed the faces but then anger had not probably gone away there was some amount of anti incumbency against the government also and as you have pointed out mahadev app which is a which is a criminal case against several people who are close to power in chatisgarh but that is not the only scandal there were many other scandals so I would say the, the, the slide which is on your screen at the moment, if you would look at it, every, every assessment, every exit poll, for Congress, it starts with a digit four and ends with a digit five. So everything for Congress is between 40s and 50s. Hmm. At the same time, everything for BJP, it starts with three and ends with four. True. It is between 30s and 40s. Hmm. So I'm I'm taking just an overview of numbers here. Congress is a 5 to 10 seat ahead of BJP, which is a comfortable majority. There are two, three seats. But, uh, uh, if there is a difference of five to ten seats, would you really say that they are really, realistically speaking, are they comfortable? Because when I was traveling and a number of MLAs uh, we met, they said that uh, if if we don't get anything around 60, we will not be comfortable. And because there will be a uh, danger always lurking of, you know, uh, the MLAs being weaned away uh, as, as what is seen uh, normally. You see, ability to manipulate uh, uh, the quality of uh, Modi and Shah, it is a slightly overrated in case of Chhattisgarh. Many people feel that anything less than 50 and uh, Congress government in the state would be in trouble and some people may quit, uh, some people may resign and BJP may come to power. But I would say that the new <coughs> defection law which uh, requires a uh, two-third of uh, MLAs to quit if they want to form a new a new party. You are you are you are seeing uh, Eknath Shinde facing a Supreme Court uh, danger in Maharashtra. So Chhattisgarh, nobody can think of two third of Congress MLAs walking away. I would consider it a comfortable majority if uh, Congress gets uh, 48, 50 seats. Uh, it would it would be workable majority, and uh, there won't be any immediate danger. You say that there is no immediate danger, but now let me shift focus. I'll come back to you, Sunil, sir. Uh, I want to shift focus now to Madhya Pradesh and Rakesh uh, Tripathi is there with us. Uh, Rakesh Dikshit. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. Rakesh no, Dikshit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Rakesh Ji, uh, the Madhya Pradesh uh, looks very, very close. Uh, and if we can play out the, the, the figures again, 102 to 125 to Congress. <laughs> Uh, in one of the surveys by uh, the, the the exit poll done by Jan Ki Baat, 100 to 123 to BJP. P mark is 103 to 122, whereas BJP gets 103 to 122. Republic 97 to 107, and uh, BJP 118 to 130. TV 9 111 to 121, and BJP 106 to 116. Now, what do these figures really indicate? Because what we thought was that Congress will be getting anything. Uh, very, very comfortable, which they have uh, like projected up to about 125. But uh, initially, like what they were claiming, 150 plus, it hasn't reached that mark at all. And it's like a close fight there. Rakesh? Yeah. The, uh, the figures do indicate that uh, what we had been anticipating all along is probably not going to happen. Figures indicate that uh, it's a very close fight. Last time when we met, I uh, had uh, I had forecast that uh, Congress might uh, win uh, between 125 to 130 and 130 seats. But it doesn't seem to be happening uh, if we go by the uh, exit poll results forecast. It's a very close contest. I don't know what's going to happen. On the what I'm wondering, the, Rakesh, I, I'll come to Puneet also on this bit, that this close fight, uh, what do you think is the main reason uh, for this close fight? And... The, the comeback of BJP, what... Yeah, BJP, comeback of BJP. Uh, Off late, comeback. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, see, a couple of months back, it looked like uh, Congress is going to Congress might win hands down, but it's not happening. BJP has uh, covered a lot of ground, especially after the Congress High Command, uh, sorry, BJP High Command realized that it uh, it will ignore uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan to its own peril. So BJP High Command then uh, started projecting, though it didn't. Uh, project him as a future chief minister candidate, but uh, it allowed Shura Singh Chauhan to campaign vigorously uh, all over Madhya Pradesh. And uh, Shura Singh Chauhan has had a greater say in uh, from candidate selection to uh, whichever constituency he wanted to campaign, wherever he wanted to go. Then his uh, schemes, like uh, his flagship scheme in particular, uh, Larli Bhaina Yavina. Right. So even BJP leaders, central leaders also started highlighting that scheme. Even Prime Minister mentioned that when the mother comes to the house, she That was in sharp contrast to what Prime Minister Modi's stand word earlier. He wouldn't even uh, mention uh, Chief Minister, forget about his scheme. Right. So this late realization uh, in the BJP central leadership that uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan is indispensable as far as BJP concerns, BJP's yeah. campaign is concerned, that probably has paid off. So, but would, so, you, agree, would you agree that had they projected uh, uh, Shivraj Singh, uh, Shivraj Chauhan right from the beginning as their main face of Madhya Pradesh, uh, the numbers could have looked better for BJP? If we go by the uh, exit poll predictions, uh, it looks like uh, BJP would have been in a more advantageous position if it had projected Shivraj Singh Chauhan as Mr. Candidate. Because whatever gain it hmm. appears to be having is because of uh, Lali Lakshmi Yojana. Right. There is no other reason why uh, voters should vote for the BJP. Because it's absolutely all because of Larli Lakshmi, Larli Bhena Yojana. That's the BJP seems to be gaining. Right. Okay. Now, uh, let me play out for the viewers uh, the, the, the Mizoram uh, exit polls, though we do not have a guest from there. But then after that, we'll take a complete picture of the poll of polls. Uh, Mizoram plate, if you could just play out now. Uh, this uh, shows 10 to 14 to MNF. Then we have uh, Congress here with 5 to 9. There is another party 15 to 25. Then P Mark is giving MNF 14 to 20. The, the other party, Nilu, is the Zoram, Zoram People's Movement. Ha, Zoram, Zoram People's, People's Movement. Movement. Okay. So uh, that is uh, ZPM. So ZPM is getting 15 to 25 by Janki Baat. P Mark gives it 9 to 15. And India TV 15 to 25. Whereas Congress is getting 5 to 9 by Janki Baat. P Mark gives it 7 to 13. And India TV. Five to nine. So, Puneet, if I may just come to you, uh, uh, would you like to uh, uh, share your thoughts on what Mizoram exit polls look like, and uh, does it look like it's it's heading towards a hung house? Well, I I would uh, you know I haven't been to Mizoram for the election, so I wouldn't be in a position to speak on what issues worked and what didn't. But purely by uh, you know, from our interactions with people in uh, Mizoram and uh, from what we see, uh, there's certainly, uh, a, you know, a likelihood of a hung assembly. But I would want to point out something here, uh, Nilu. You see, when you, uh, uh, the ZPM is a five-year-old party. Uh, this is a party that was formed uh just ahead of the 2018 elections. And uh, most of its ranks, its leaders were drawn from the Congress. The ones who had not quit the Congress and gone to the MNF or, uh, you know, to the BJP were the ones who went eventually to the, to the ZPM. And so five years back, you had a Congress which had had long spells of power in Mizoram reduced to a complete rubble of its past self. It had uh, it had no organization left in Mizoram. 
uh, no leadership left in Mizoram. So for the Congress to now be in a position, uh, you know, if we look at these uh, surveys, uh, you know, the higher side for two of them is nine seats. Uh, one suggests 13. I think it is uh, it is a good recovery for the Congress uh, in, the, in that sense. Uh, uh, but then you see, whether it is the MNF or the ZPM, one needs to factor in that in the Northeast, in uh, any of the Northeastern states where you have local parties, it's always the local parties that have been, uh, you know, uh, th that have been able to swing uh, the mood in their favor when compared to, uh, you know, a weakened Congress. Right. As long as the Congress was a strong organization centrally, and especially in terms when the Congress held power at the center, you had a Congress that was also strong in the states of the Northeast. But right. that does not happen when the Congress becomes weak at, at a central level, because most of the Northeastern states fall under the back, you know, what, uh, what are clubbed as states that receive grants under different uh, segments that are clubbed as, you know, the backward region fund. And so there's a lot of dependency of these uh, states on central grants in terms of, you know, their economic requirements, their financial requirements. And uh, so if it is not the Congress at the center, uh, they would ideally favor a party that is there at the center. And since the BJP does not have a presence in Mizoram, you see the, the local parties, the two local parties, going from strength to strength or retaining whatever, you know, they had earlier. Because eventually, uh, at the central level, you'll see either of these parties doing business with the BJP, which the Congress cannot. So, so those are the factors that come to my mind. I do not speak with authority at all on uh, issues that have worked on the ground since I have not been there. Right. But in principle, these are the issues that I can understand as far as right. concerned. So the overall picture for Mizoram definitely is that the two regional fronts, uh, the, the regional parties are doing well. And of course, there is a revival of Congress there as well in Mizoram. Now, let me come for the complete picture. I'll come to you, Srini, sir, now that... Uh, Everywhere, it seems that uh, the grand revival of Congress looks like the big story, whether it is Chhattisgarh, whether it is Rajasthan, whether it is uh, Madhya Pradesh, whether it is Mizoram, which is a smaller state, uh, Rajasthan, everywhere. So does the big story look like the grand revival of Congress? So you're muted. So you're muted. Yeah, you'll have to unmute. Yes. Um. Yes. Yeah, so I won't quickly jump to that conclusion. And it's not a revival all over. Uh, in Chhattisgarh, it is, uh, it'll be back in power. Uh, in Madhya Pradesh, it had, uh, you know, it had earlier complained that uh, the mandate had been slow, stolen. Uh, so it would like to take back the mandate. In the case of Rajasthan, it is trying to retain. What is really a, a big boost for Congress, that would be Telangana. In Telangana, there's something uh, very different that would have happened with the Congress because normally Congress party, when it uh, loses uh, to its regional uh, allies or you know regional uh, formations, it's very difficult for them to revive. Uh, but in this case, if actually Congress manages to come back, then uh, it will be a good success. But then uh, while I'm saying this, this has been a trend in... Um, Andhra Pradesh, undivided Andhra Pradesh. If you recall, uh, in the 80s, it was uh, Congress Party, which has been ruling for quite a while. And then NTR came and then sucked them out of power. Then it came uh, Chandra Avnadu, there was a palace coup. And then after that, uh, when they didn't find his performance, because his development didn't go beyond Hyderabad, and the rural uh, Andhra Pradesh, undivided Andhra Pradesh was suffering, so they brought in YSR Congress, uh, not YSR Congress, YSR. YSR Reddy. Reddy. And he became the chief minister. Uh, but again, TRS came, uh, again as a people's movement, a movement which went for over a decade, and they were set to power. But then you have to remember, if he is actually beaten, he hasn't managed to 
retain power for over a decade now, just about a decade. So uh, it seems that Andhra Pradesh politics moves in a in a different cycle, and uh, but as a political party, Congress will really get a big boost because uh, you know six months ago nobody would have thought this kind of things. A year ago, most people would have thought that Congress written off its BJP versus uh, uh, BRS, and so therefore it will be a big boost for them. As far as Chhattisgarh is concerned, uh, I think it is more or less. Uh, what people have been predicting. It seems to be sticking to that um, script unless something happens where uh, BJP gets very proactive and if the, uh, you know, if, if the numbers show that on both sides uh, there's a neck to neck, then of course, uh, you know, anything may happen. But as a friend from Chhattisgarh is telling us that that's not the case, uh, Congress might have a, uh, you know, clear majority there. Uh, Madhya Pradesh would be really a big surprise for me personally because uh, I have been uh, hearing our own Puneet has gone there and uh, I've been hearing from other sources also that Congress had a good chance there. And uh, uh, it, this would be a really, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it appears that it, it's going to be a very close fight there. But, you know, let me, uh, I mean, let me go back a little bit. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, it appears that uh, stays with the establishment for much more longer time. You know, for a very long time, it stuck with uh, Congress. And the local satraps there, they really uh, are able to grow the roots. For instance, when Arjun Singh was in power, it was really tough for him to dislodge. Though that time, Rajiv Gandhi, Rahul's father, tried his best to dislodge him. He brought in uh, uh, Motilal Lora. Uh, but, you know, it was very difficult for the center to do anything with the state uh, leader once the people start loving him. I think there's something interesting which we, you might see here in case Mama comes back. All right. That's an interesting take. Uh, now, uh, may I come to Laura? I don't know. I'm, uh, all certain day, I'm still skeptical about this uh, exit polls. I, have a, I still have a hunch and uh, having toward uh, half of the state, that Congress still has an age. I don't oh. know. I still would like to stick out my neck and say that Congress so might good. win uh, between 125 to uh, 125 and 130 seats. All right. Let me get in Puneet also. Puneet was there. Uh, so and no, I, I think, uh, Neil, I think, I, I think uh, you know, TK and Gyan have been waiting for quite some time. Let them finish, but I'd like to come in on Madhya Pradesh uh, a little later. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, Gyan, uh, what would you want to say about uh, the results which you are seeing in Rajasthan? Uh, is it heading for a uh, hung assembly, uh, a very tight contest over there? Is what you expected while you were on the, uh, when you went to cover the campaigns? Uh, I will, uh, it's difficult to, uh, uh, agree to the exit polls. They have gone wrong in they went wrong in 2013, 18, and I don't think uh, it will be uh, prudent to say that this is this this is the number we are looking at. But uh, because Rajasthan is an election where it is the contest is between the chief minister and the prime minister, the organization comes secondary. Uh, so if uh, People have voted for uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi, then uh, the BJP will should get a com comfortable majority. And if the, and if the uh, uh, populist schemes of uh, the Chief Minister has worked, then uh, Congress will be able to make history and re retain power for the first time in 30 years. Any party doing that, so it's a very tough call. Uh, I will. I don't think that it is fair to. Uh, agree to these numbers of... Uh, uh, okay, so you wouldn't want to agree to the numbers of the exit poll. Okay. Let's wait for the decision uh, on December 3rd. Because okay, the okay. exit polls have gone wrong <laughs> twice. So it's very difficult yeah, for me to... All right. All right. Okay. Now, Rajlakshmi, for the complete picture, yeah. uh, five states and the exit poll mm -hmm. result, I mean, the exit poll uh, figures which are out, what does the story look like to you? Uh, Congress was claiming five all and... Uh, <laughs> defeating BJP everywhere, BJP nowhere in the picture. So what does the big picture look like for you? 
that's a little bit of a tall order for that that the congress would sort of win five all that of course has to be said for optics and for uh, and for good cbms you know for its confidence building measures for its uh, you know organizationally and otherwise but as for a, but i think you know, uh, uh, i think telangana gives uh, somewhat you know clear up uh, you know sort of mandate for the congress uh, and the others seems to be neck to neck Chhattisgarh, uh, uh, definitely, it seems that the Congress has a good chance. But then again, the history of the Congress, you know, repeating itself in in any state, uh, uh, and to beat the income uh, the anti incumbency is rather a rare uh, phenomenon. So, so uh, I'd still be a little bit circumspect. Uh, I mean, of that also. And yes, as 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 uh, Gyan said, that you know, exit polls have gone to. Uh, I mean, I mean, have shown a completely different uh, picture from the real outcome now now as far as you know rajasthan goes where i sort of cover i mean i also sort of traveled there a little bit and spoke to people as well um i mean one of course you know got the sense yes that the congress's schemes its welfare schemes have uh, i mean have benefited um, the people you know especially the health coverage uh, you know smartphones to young women and so on, and uh, and then you had uh, food packets uh, to uh, to all families and the electricity subsidy. So all these things have had a certain uh, secularly, uh, you know, let's say benign effect. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sort of covering all segments of society, but then it's reach. But I was also told that campaigning on these issues by uh, by the MLAs, by party workers, has been extremely weak. So, uh, and then, of course, the local, you know, anti-incumbency is also a, uh, is also a big factor because uh, I think the Congress renominated close to, I think, 101 MLAs. And uh, and the BJP, of course, uh, does not suffer the same, but it renominated close to 59 MLAs. But then, but then the ruling uh, party obviously suffers the more, you know, in terms of anti-incumbency. So, uh, and then I was also told that, well, it's not happened, you know, anywhere where, where a government gets re-elected just because it's done good, good, you know, good work. But but, uh, but what the BJP has in its favor is, is because, you know, it's a cadre based party, right? And which the Congress is not. Of course, the Bharat Jodo Yatra, all these things did sort of galvanize, galvanize the party workers, but that's not really sufficient to bring the voter to the booth. And... Uh, uh, and in the last elections, that is 2018, when uh, the Congress could have, in fact, you know, secured a, um, I mean, a sweeping, you know, majority in all the states, whether it be MP or whether it be Rajasthan, where the incumbent party was a BJP, it did not do so. I mean, therefore, for me to expect that when it is in power and to do sort of better when it was not in power. Uh, is uh, is a little bit uh, is a little bit far fetched yet, but 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 this is also to underscore that it has sort of put in a good fight and uh, and that even if the BJP wins in some of the states or retains in MP, I mean it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be sweeping at all. I mean it's been a tough fight, uh, and the and and the Congress has sort of put in a good fight, which is also going to be repeated, I think, in twenty twenty four. So this also sets the pitch. That it's not going to be a cakewalk for the BJP in any sense of the term. Twenty twenty four. Yeah, and uh, and including you know Mizoram uh, because this uh, this party, the Zoram Nationalist Party, is a party of six six regional parties, right? And uh, 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 and the MNF, the ruling MNF, has been there since I think nineteen ninety, and uh, and and it's an ally of the NDA. So if the MNF loses, in fact, the uh, this uh, the ZNF has been given a fairly good lead by all the uh, exit posters and they've said that they're going to play the role of kingmaker and they have also said they are not going to ally either with the India or with India. So they are going to be in a position to really call the shots and uh, here I don't think the MNF is really in a good position uh, because this has to be connected with the events that happened you know, in the neighborhood you know, in Manipur and that has that is going to cast a shadow on how the people are going to vote uh, in, in that state. Yeah. Suril ji has just uh, forwarded a very interesting uh, graphic. I wish we could have uh, just played this out, but I'll just uh, read it out what he has sent. He sent the vote share prediction. BJP's vote share prediction in Chhattisgarh, of course. Uh, that is Madhya Pradesh. That is Madhya. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, Madhya Pradesh. BJP is 43.1% and 
Congress is also 43.1%, and others have a vote share of 13.8%. So, uh, Sunilji, you would like to comment on this? It's quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. The vote since, share is simple. Since, for both since, the since the two friends here have a reservations about exit polls, I would like to add to that. That on my YouTube channel, I was like, I was live for an hour and a half. And it took me 20 minutes to read out the failure of exit poll from 2004 to 2023. It is such a long list. It is a lo very long list. But I won't apply that to this election, these exit polls, except one P mark slide which I have forwarded you. Very interestingly, it gives the same percentage of votes even to decimal point to Congress and BJP both. And same number of seats range 1032, 122. Yes, both for Congress and BJP. And it looks like more like more, more of a case of a cut and paste. Someone might have done it. It looks like that. But that apart from that, these elections, I had anticipated these results from except one Mizoram, which I don't fully understand. All other states, four states, results are as per my anticipation, as per my reports. I had been commenting on these. Chhattisgarh Congress is going to get a comfortable majority, which is it is having. Some people may feel that five to seven seat of a majority of five to seven seat Congress would, would not be comfortable, but I know it for, as an insider. It would be very comfortable majority. BJP would not be able to play any mischief as Jogi had done in the first uh, uh, government. He had purchased 13 MLAs of BJP. No such thing is going to take place now. Five to seven seats uh, uh, surplus, more than uh, the needed. It is good for Congress. That is one. Another, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Telangana, all these states, they are proving, if we believe a little bit in exit polls, all, all three states are showing what we had been anticipating. There were ground reports from Rajasthan that Congress is going out of power. There were ground reports from Madhya Pradesh that Congress is going to have a lead. As Rakesh has suggested that he doesn't believe the exit poll figures in Madhya Pradesh and Congress as per Rakesh would get a greater majority uh, in terms of votes or seats. I also feel so. It may go slightly uh, in favor of Congress. Telangana, uh, as a Mr. Srinivasan has said, it is a huge gain for Congress party. It is a huge gain. You see, Congress had taken the decision to bifurcate the state of Andhra and Telangana, and Congress had never come to power after that, if I remember correctly. This is for the first time. The state is repaying Congress party for giving it a statehood. So it is a thanksgiving to Congress party. If, if you look at Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, Congress has one gain, one loss. But Telangana is a pure gain. So Congress probably has a reasons to be happy, more reasons to be happy. BJP is not gaining anything. It is losing one, gaining one. I'm not considering Mizoram it is because it is a complex situation. And if I remember correctly, our chief minister of Mizoram, who is part of NDA, he had refused to be on the same election meeting dais with Prime Minister Modi because what Modi has performed in Manipur, chief minister of Mizoram had felt that it would give him a blow in his own state. So he has refused to share dais with Modi. So it is a complicated thing to me. I don't fully understand that. But to me, Congress has more reasons to uh, be happy. Losing one, gaining one, and pure gain Telangana. Right. All right. Uh, I also want to talk about, uh, Puneet, I'll come to you now for this, that uh, Congress, of course, had uh, given a lot of freedom to its uh, regional Shatraps, and the results show the same as far as Gelot is concerned, Kamal Nath is concerned, Bhupesh Baghel is concerned. And if you juxtapose it with the kind of strategy which BJP adopted, collective leadership, only Modi uh, being the face of the campaign. Now, how do you see it for BJP, uh, especially? Uh, does 
are we in a position after seeing the exit poll results? Does the Modi factor really work for BJP in the Vidhan Sabha elections? As what we have seen that in the earlier elections, it hasn't. whether it was Himachal, whether it was Karnataka, and the same thing seems to be happening in these uh, five states as well. Well, Nilu, I would say that, you know, and this is something that I'd said when we were discussing the Karnataka results also, that the BJP uh, today and for the last nine and a half years is going down the same slippery slope that the Congress had under Mrs. Indira Gandhi in the 70s and, uh, you know, uh by by dismantling their state leaders and strong state leaders who could win the party elections that is something that the bjp has been doing because when the bjp says collective leadership it does not uh mean anything else but narendra modi hmm. that is their collective leadership and we have seen that great collective leadership fail time and again in state elections. Because what works at the central level for the BJP in Lok Sabha elections does not and may not work in state elections. There are issues that are very specific to state elections, which Mr. Modi in his great wisdom does not seem to understand. And you know, to have a common template of uh, of elections, uh, of uh, electoral strategy for Lok Sabha and for uh, assembly elections, and might I add, even municipal elections in case of the BJP, is not sound electoral strategy. Mm. And that is where the BJP slips uh, under its current leadership. Uh, I mean... If you uh, if you look at the current lot of elections, uh, irrespective of whatever the results say, I would say uh, Mr. Modi actually uh, has egg on his face, and I'll say that without even waiting for uh, the actual results to come in. Yeah. And that I say for the simple reason that you made all your efforts to sideline Shiv Shivraj Singh Chauhan in Madhya Pradesh. What did you have to go back to towards the last lap of elections? You had to surrender to him in candidate selection, uh, you know, the second, third list onwards. You surrendered to the, to the chief minister. You, you know, happily gave tickets to a lot of his people. You had to surrender to him in terms of election strategy and campaigning. You had to fall back on Ladli Bahna. You had to bring him back on a campaign tour and you know make him campaign aggressively what did you do in rajasthan you uh, took every uh, you know possible step to sideline vasundhara raje and you succeeded with that in the first list and created troubles for you by uh, you know forcing people to contest you know bahar loyalists several of them to contest as independents and so by the time the second list came you surrendered to Vasundara Raje and you gave her loyalists uh, the tickets. And then as the campaigning process progressed, while you may not have declared her as the chief ministerial face, you let her campaign the way she wanted to. And similarly, when you go to Chhattisgarh, although the, in Chhattisgarh the issues were different, the, 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 uh, you know, there are other complexities uh, which Sunilji would be better placed to talk about. You had to ultimately go back and ask Raman Singh, fine, you contest. You had to go back and talk about, uh, you know, remind people about the government uh, of Chhattisgarh before 2018 without, you know, crediting Raman Singh, all right. But you had to talk about those days. So, I mean, if Mr. Modi is such a great leader, that he can swing even now. I, I would say that I would give him that advantage from 2014 to 2018. But 2018 onwards, that you can even win state elections continuously only on his name. I think that is a, a, 
a myth that has been broken several times over the last few years, and it it will be broken again in this current election. So, Shrinisa, I would want to come to you now that uh, if what uh, exit poll figures say, and if at all it is true, uh, mm -hmm. what is it really? I mean, how do we see things happening in BJP? And BJP, of course, doesn't seem to be learning its lessons. It didn't learn its lessons from Himachal, didn't learn its lessons from Karnataka. And if it they go this, the same path as what exit polls are showing, what is the likelihood of things happening within the party, within the BJP? Right. Um, you know, uh, that's a very interesting thing. I would like to answer that. But before that, I just want to say, say if these, uh, whatever the outcome as exit polls are saying, if that were to be true, there are a couple of trends which are emerging here. If we had to believe in these numbers, I'm putting this KV at one. You know, it seems, as we know earlier also, it's only reinstating. In urban India, BJP seems to have a strength. In rural India, it is Congress which is kind of, kind of staging a comeback. Second, it looks a bit strange to me that the leaders, people are still okay. For instance, uh, in uh, Rajasthan, they're okay with, uh, you know, uh, Gehlot, but not so much with his MLAs. And same is the thing in Telangana. They have seemed to be okay with uh, Chandrasekhar Rao, but not so much with his other MLAs. So the anti-incumbency weighing, and even in Madhya Pradesh, it's, it's leadership of, uh, you know, um, uh, the chief minister there, which seems to be playing an important role. So that's a very, very significant role that local leaders do matter. And it is MLAs who are actually seem to be pulling them down. Uh, so the strategy of BJP earlier to remove all the MLAs and then bring in a new set of uh, candidates in this election seem to be, seem to have worked, but uh, that's where they seem to be uh, fumbling right now. Third is, um, you know, whether uh, BJP was actually able to polarize these elections, especially in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, they did make a severe attempt in Rajasthan. Uh, it, this election would tell us that whether actually that has happened because it didn't happen in Karnataka. And uh, of course, in Telangana, I don't, uh, sorry, uh, uh, in Telangana again, I don't think uh, it, it went anywhere. So that's that's a very important thing we would know from there. The other thing which I feel here is this is really an election of schemes because if it is largely Ben, which seemed to be winning, or it is um, in Chhattisgarh, it seemed to be another scheme which seemed to be winning. Uh, so I think what people are looking at is, uh, you know, irrespective of which our government comes to power, they certainly want to uh, get their due in some of the other form, and they are looking forward to that. And uh, I mean, that's a, that's a very, you know, uh, uh, significant. And I think it, it's it's important because the elections move towards this direction is far better than people swinging to uh, issues, emotional, emotive issues like Hindutva and other things. I mean, these are economic issues. Uh, welfareism is an important thing since we are moving towards a liberalized economy and we don't have a proper safety net. People do find solace in these kind of schemes, schemes, and that, that's how we should look at it. I think so. But these are four. Of... Point, uh, Shinisa, when you said yes. that motive issues uh, didn't find too much of a place uh, in all these uh, five states, so that does look like a silver lining. Yeah, if, if it happens, I mean, I, we still don't know. But finally, the, coming back to a question, which I uh, it took some time to come. Uh, you see. To me, it appears that with this, um, if these trends are true, again, this is a caveat, we are returning back after a high of Hindutva, we would be returning back to more normal elections. <clears throat> and uh, that, that would be really good for the democracy if that, all, that happens, where a single uh, person's charisma is, won't be a, a factor alone. Uh, you know, it would be proven to BJP that, you know, the state leaders do matter. Uh, and, you know, the the character of uh, the BJP itself may have to undergo a change. Maybe I'm jumping the gun. I'm going a bit ahead of the story. But uh, if these trends are true, that's what I, I would see that, you know, um, in some ways, um, you know, the, the 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 democratization within the parties will also happen if at all it goes in the way it is going. So these are broadly the things I see. That's a very interesting take on uh, the trends which you pointed out, especially the, with the larger story. Uh, Rakesh, you, you what what would you want to say? And then for the concluding remarks, I'll come to Rajalakshmi and Gyan. Then uh, yes, but I, I'll I'll I don't know. I, I would confine my remark to only Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Uh, as I said, I am still skeptical about this uh, exit poll. 
because I covered uh, Mahakoshal region and a part of You're very Kuhle hopeful about region. Congress winning uh, bigger numbers. Uh, yes, sir. I, I still feel uh, I spoke to a lot of many people and uh, there was a very perceptible anger against the BJP against the Chief Minister. And uh, still, if BJP manages to win and um, uh, retain power for the record fifth time, I would consider it as a miracle. Right. All right. So, Gyan, uh, after these exit poll figures are out, uh, who do you think is going to have a sleepless night? Or both the parties, BJP or Congress, will sleep tight and wait for 3rd December? <laughs> uh, I think BJP has, uh, has reasons to be worried. Okay. Okay. Uh, because um, even if it manages to win Rajasthan, it is no big deal. Rajasthan man uh, changes government every five years. The, pro the question here is what happens in Madhya Pradesh? Because in 2018, BJP did not get a majority on its own. Yes. In, again, if that happens, then it is a serious uh, issue. Uh, whether it will be uh, the same result will reflect in uh, 2024 also is difficult to say. But there is a challenge both in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Right. If, we, if Congress manages to uh, retain power in Chhattisgarh, it's not easy for a sitting government or sitting chief minister to retain power. But in all likelihood, Congress should be able to be comfortable in uh, Chhattisgarh. And if BJP manages to, if there's a hung assembly in Madhya Pradesh, then it will be almost 10 years. Right second term, second five-year term that BJP doesn't have a majority on its own, even though the chief minister has been there for 18 years now, 17 or 18 years, if I'm not wrong. Right. So, so it's a difficult uh, question. Uh, and uh, whether these elections will have an impact, similar results will be reflected in 2024. I don't, I, I will uh, not comment on that. Okay. Uh, I, I think the, uh, uh, Exit poll results in, in uh, Mizoram are very interesting because uh, of two reasons. One, uh, it reflects uh, the ongoing violence in Manipur. And secondly, uh, MNF decision to not contest for the second time with BJP in alliance. Mm -hmm. It happened in the earlier election also. And then they repeat, repeated the, the decision in this election also. Uh, the chief minister did not uh, uh, attend the meeting with BJP. <laughs> public meeting with BJP and they also did not contest the election. So if BJP is ab not able to get uh, anything, a uh, substantial number, then it reflects the uh, central policies of the of what is happening in Manipur. Right. So Raj Lakshmi, the concluding comments yeah. from you, I'm sure you must have started thinking about your tomorrow, the, the headline in the newspaper. <laughs> uh, what do you think is going to be the big headline tomorrow? <laughs> I mean, I think it will say that there's no clear sweep for any any party, save you know, Telangana. I think probably, uh, you know, as far as the Congress is concerned. But I, but but I agree with what Srinivasan said, and also with what others have said, uh, you know, for Puneet and and everybody else. That you know, the sheen uh, has been uh, sort of you know wearing out from the BJP now. I mean, I mean, and also from Mr. Modi, it's not the same, you know, as it was in. Uh, 2014 and again in 2019 and it's been sort of coming down you know I mean because I think it's a law you know of diminishing returns essentially and uh, and uh, and we saw that that magic did not work you know, you know despite the uh, double engine rhetoric and then the communal rhetoric everything you know which uh, it didn't work and and they tried it again this time of course the double engine was also tried uh, but the communal rhetoric uh, I mean I don't know if I'm wrong but yes it was used the uh, polarizing rhetoric was used, but to a certain, uh, I think, less degree, you know. So this focus uh, of, from the BJP was also on the schemes of the central government and uh, and also, of course, the state government. But but then since this collective leadership thing was there, framework was there, so so it was will more the credit, schemes. Will the credit for this, Raj yeah. Lakshmi, will go to yeah. Congress because they raised uh, issues like price rise, inflation, and uh, central uh, the welfare schemes, welfareism was uh, on the yes. top agenda. Yes, of course, you know, to an extent, yes, to a to to a large extent, because I think it succeeded even deflecting the uh, the campaign itself, because it was mm. seen in Karnataka and and it was seen in HP also. Because if you fall, you know, in that narrative of uh, uh, the temple runs and who is more Hindu than the other, then uh, there is a trap, you know. So I think the Congress very smartly has tested this out. Uh, and it worked in their case. 
so so i think a the the sheen has gone down and b uh, the fact that it's more issue based as shrinivasan said uh, so here i think that the left stands a good chance uh, mm. if it's if it's going to be issue based elections then the left parties you know definitely who have who who always fight elections on issues they have a good chance in this country a good future in this country too yeah really bjp has more reasons to worry uh, shrinivasan yeah. sir you, you yeah. want to say yeah uh, but i just want to say one thing you know uh, looking the trends of these election if at all it happens the way we are seeing it you know we are still far off as many of you are very skeptical even now uh, that it's only after all end of the day exit polls uh, you see the thing here is what i feel is one need to see parliamentary election differently uh this may may not have any impact on 2024 those, those are very different election i think the electorate now understands that and you know still uh, let's remember that uh, as a uh, prime minister candidate modi is still ahead of all others even now and remains one of the most popular uh, leaders even today but on the other hand uh, the uh, you know the whole scenario is very different than what it was in 2018 19 where it seemed that you know there's no challenge to him there is a window of opportunity if the Cong uh, congress and other parties that india alliance uh, there will be a hope for them if they manage to uh, get their act together they still have to lot of ground to cover but post december the political coverage is going to be far more interesting that's what i would say absolutely absolutely so more reasons for bjp to worry but yes if uh, congress doesn't uh even form the government but they still have reasons to cheer that at least the party is in a revival mode and of course they have to work harder for the 2024 elections thank you so much uh, shrinivasan sir uh, rakesh ji uh, puneet gyan rajlakshmi it was wonderful mm -hmm. having all of you on the program thank you